Dear participants throughout the world and here at the Gertianum, it is a big moment that we're able at this conference, we're able to present the new edition of the agriculture course. You can hold him in your hands. It is no longer a project. It is no longer being worked on, but is present now as a as a publication, 500 pages, heavy on the one hand, but also we can say very light on the other side. When we think about what inspires us, what for nearly a hundred years in the biodynamic movement in so many places, in so many areas, that that is all, all had its starting point from the event of the agricultural course in 1924, and that the agriculture course is uh, has now taken place in the book form. Now, it is the case that when the course was held in 1924, Rudolf Steiner, um, road uh, drove from here to the farm. That was quite clear that it would not take place here, but there where agriculture was happening, and many of us know it, that this, this farm, this great estate there, was called Kobowitz, is east of Berlin, in, in Schlesien, in what is now Poland. And the lectures took place there with around 130 participants. And as was normal there, it was uh, recorded stenographically. So somebody was there. There were no, um, no recording systems then, but it had to be written down in shorthand. And then from there, as as much as uh, in the evening was then made into longhand. And then of course, it happened that the very quickly after the course, the intention was there of publishing it and making it available so that already in, in three or four months after the course, the book would be printed and made available. That was a very, quick and intensive work from the different um, people who had been um, recording, recording this. And this first publication and the further and uh, further ones were not actually available freely. It was only available to those who, um, um, who were able to do it. And only in the 1950s was this course published as one of the um, whole Gesamtausgabe 127 was available then in books. The last edition, the eighth one, it was um, from 1999 and it was, so it was really the time to try yet again to look at the source. And it was particularly our concern in the section that we would go towards this 100 year anniversary in two years, that, that it is actually 100 years, 100 years since the course was given, that we would then actually try again to really to assess and make available the sources fully. So we have we had um, an open source arrangement so with the whole of anthroposophy, so nothing is hidden. So it is also, it's important that we keep this as clear and clean as possible. And then we entered into um, discussion with the Nachlassverwaltung, with the archive and with the public, public publishers. It's slightly differentiated here at the Goetheanum that is uh, connected with the history of anthroposophy. And that was a very <clears throat> intensive and constructive and also exciting work together. And in this way, 
we if we managed in the course of two years much quicker than what I imagined <clears throat> and in order to for this uh, looking at all the different archives and considering the historical situation and the evaluation of all the comment commentaries that were made we were we are a little publications group and we will now each one of us will um, say a little bit from the work which we undertook there. <clears throat> the members of this group are then uh, Hans Sintner, who works in the archive. <clears throat> he had done the main text work. He will also speak. And then there's Albrecht Römer. He, is, he was working with me and was the initiator of this whole project. Then there is Martin von Mackensen, who um, sit for the whole of his life, you could say, had been engaged with the source of the, of the Kobowitz course from the Dottenfelder Hof. And the fifth one is Rudolf Isler, who is a farmer and historian in Switzerland, who, who very precisely was... Um, helping us to go through the various passages in the text. <clears throat> and now it is the case that Hans Christian Saint is ill and couldn't be with us. And Rudolf Isler is, is, is recovering from Corona. And so he was not able to come. So what is now new? What was our work? And I would like to bring the whole thing as an image. <clears throat> On the book, <clears throat> the book is red as it was before in a bright, brilliant red. And I think that this is, um, it was always the case and we kept it red. And then, of course, the title has changed. The, the title for several um, editions is, has been the Spiritual Scientific Foundations for Thriving Agriculture. And that we had always thought that this was the title which Steiner gave it. So now it is again called the Agriculture Course, like apparently the original course was um, given and the other one has become the subtitle. If we then go into it, then we have changed the whole structure of it. For well, first of all, it is like from this 500 pages, there are more than half of it are actually appendices. There was a lot of materials there, as there was also before, but now there's new material as well. And not everything which we had has found a place. And so we have um, then a part of the historical so um, material has been printed in the magazine, um, in the magazine which has appeared at the same time. All the texts which we have concerning agriculture, where Steiner um, was present but did not have a direct connection with Kobowitz, is in this other little book with all their sources. And now, if we go to the to the actual agricultural course, not to the appendix and other people will report about this, then it is so that it, is, it, it begins directly with the first lecture. There was always this, um, this speech beforehand which Steiner described when he came back from a course for the Dornach Anthroposophical Society. That is now further back, just like with the title, the course is the substance as it is in the title. And this comes in a very clear way. And the title which has been given, which the earlier publications had put in there, is now gone. The further reference is to this, but we have then made this really to go direct to the source. And then we come to the eight, then we come to the eight lectures with the, the, with the questions and answers. There are four of these. And then 
Then comes part two. <clears throat> before, the, before the appendices comes part two. And this is what I would like to look at a bit more closely because we have, we have said to ourselves that we're in the presentations of Steiner that was uh, recorded, that is actually recorded, but what has also happened in Kobowitz. And we think that this is something impo very important for our whole movement to, to see that this, the foundation of the, in, the experimental psych circle, which was then founded in Dornach. And we have set up part two, which is much smaller, but we have given, provided the possibility to show in part two what, what was connected with the foundation of this experimental circle. <clears throat> Perhaps I will read one or the other piece um, out. For those who know this book, there was always also a, a, um, an address about this founding on the 11th of June, and that is also very impressive. And we also, um, to create, have a picture how these, how these conditions were regarding this foundation. And there we can imagine to ourselves how Steiner lived in this, that it was not so easy for him. So this, these are farmers uh, and partners who were listening to this. It was so that, that they said to themselves, now we are getting something and we want to take it up. And, and at the same time, they had not understood it at all. So there was a huge argument. And that is, nonetheless, has led to the foundation of the experimental circle. And we know this. In many places where the biodynamic work um, really spread out from the different farms, it is not so easy. This not being able to understand one another. That is, of course, something we all know. But we can hear, we can see here that nonetheless, they came to an agreement and then also to have a, a working together between the experimental circle in which the people in Dornach were not present to the section in Dornach. So, there is then, we found, we found notes from conversations which had taken place before the foundation. And, and that, that I will quote briefly. It was Count Keisling who said this, we must convert this into action in an agriculturally practical way. Otherwise, the most wonderful things which Rudolf Steiner spoke, we will not be able to, to retain, it will get lost. We are in the agricultural um, work. We want to fertilize this for agriculture, to bring agriculturists together to a experimental circle, not just listening. So we have to really um, begin to work together. There we hear through this that one wanted to enter into a partnership with, with Steiner and the, and the school. And there was different approaches. That is, that is why there was a whole argument. And we've also printed this because it's quite exciting. And then it nonetheless came to the resolution which I didn't know, know, but I hadn't seen before. And then Steiner goes further with his address in the following way. <clears throat> if we want to work together in this way, that we have a genuinely conservative, but nonetheless externally radical progress, progressive, process. So through this working together between the school and the farmers who wanted to bring it about, we wanted to have a really beautifully conservative element and a radical progressive element. And this appears very clearly. And then further down, 
he says <clears throat> what many of us know if we want to work in this way like siamese twins for for donna and the circle to grow together so so this working together this partnership is the foundation and that is all presented in this new edition and you can go into it so much to the great larger structure of this new edition and now i hope that i hope christian Sinta can join us and i will pass it on to him <coughs> I hope you can hear me. <clears throat> so good day to everybody and good that I can actually be at least be present today. Yesterday I was ill and then yesterday I became ill. And so now we're doing it per Zoom as well as we can. I would like to begin with a very, very great thank to my colleagues and many others I would actually mention a few people, first of all, to all my all the predecessors who um, for the um, current edition is based on the work of all the previous ones. And without them, we wouldn't have managed to achieve what we have achieved in terms of enlarging it. And of course, great thanks are to Rudolf Steiner. So a previous colleague of mine said we have our, our work is, is due to Rudolf Steiner with 450 50 copies, which we've given out in the whole of the Gesamtarbeit of uh, Ausgabe. We, we have to really be aware of all the many different things which uh, Rudolf Steiner had given to us. So we also have to acknowledge that. Also, thanks to, to my colleague, um, of course, we have worked very intensively together on this, um, on the texts of the course. And also there, uh, different worlds come to meet others, so where uh, experienced farmer Rudolf Isler and also um, Germanic scholar. And there, these people also have to come together and we have really been able to intensively work together. And so I would like to give these thanks in a public way. And also, also of course, in all the other, all the other pub publishing partners. And then of course, and I find this very good with this work on the course that we, we have brought in other professionals and especially I would also like to Melton Gardner from, from the USA um, and also from Switzerland. They have also read through the uh, earlier stages of this book and have been able to bring some important um, additions. <clears throat> then, of course, thanks in the name of the archive to the section and all the financial aspect to be able to support this. That was a <clears throat> big, big financial support which the archive had become through this. And nonetheless, I must also say, it was of course for me, a side project. Our main project is to, at the moment, is to go through the whole Gesamtausgabe to make this complete by 2025. So 450 volumes uh, together. And of course the agricultural course is not a new edition, but a new public, a new edition. So that is, of course, um, a side project of our main field of work, namely to produce complete new um, volumes. So I had thought that I would give you, show you a few PowerPoints so that I can um, help you to visualize what um, you, um, to give you a picture of what we have been creating. Yes, we can, we can see the PowerPoint. We can see what you're putting there. 
<laughs> so just as Uli Horto has said, these two books belong together. They're like um, twins, if you like, the archive magazine and the agriculture course in this new form. And Uli will perhaps say a little bit more that we spoke about a triage. And I hope he will be able to um, refer to this third book, which belongs with it, which I think they really do belong together. They, they also relate to one another. So that should actually be even better. <clears throat> I will do it as everything is. So I thought to add to as a reminder that I would show a few photos of Kobovitz, Schloss Kobovitz, where you can see <coughs> on the south southwest corner of Schloss Kobovitz. And there it's in the south southwest corner. That is where the course took place. And here you can see, see it from the north, northeast. So southwest corner, and this is the north, northwest view. That was the meadow which, um, which Steiner used as a measure for the preparations. And then further, that is the car shed. And if I see this picture, then I'm so surprised that both of these pictures, both the dairy and the cow shed, that this is the, that the photos are amazingly good already at that time. And on the other side, so, so very different. The, um, the cow sheds don't look so very different today. <clears throat> Then a few picture from the garden. That was, of course, a big area. Um, <clears throat> there's a gate in the garden, various the rose arches. And this is where Rudolf Steiner had once sat upon this bench. And then, <clears throat> then there was, of course, uh, a pond. The <clears throat> <clears throat> And then it's a so-called bathing house. So you had actually, <clears throat> and there you can see Lizzie, Louisa Glasson, that was the secretary of Marie Steiner, together with Dorothy von Kaiserling and Marie Steiner. And I would like to link on this regarding the new edition. In the, in the yes, current issue, edition, we have published the participant list and also enlarged upon it as much as we could, right up to its point of publication. And in the preparation for this presentation, this, this picture came up to us. And in the course of our work with the course, with the new edition, a very, a very good exchange developed with a man who was able to share many different connections. So to Herr Waldner, he had written an autobiography from Alexander von Kaiserling. And, and with this one, we, with him, we've been in regular discussion. And, and I asked then, can you say something more about this lady in the middle? And he said, well, that is Dorothy von Kaiserling. That was the first wife of Alexander von Kaiserling. And then if you look from the picture, how differ differentiated the clothes are between the different three different um, generations. And then of course, on, based on this um, photo, we have to, we have to include Louisa Glasson and Dorothy as participants of the course. I spoke, I, I wrote, uh, wrote to him, and how do you see that is? Because Dorothy was only an accompanying person of, of um, Alexander, or was he a participant? And Johanna von Kaiserlich was so determining that it was very clear that this, this, uh, the, that she also should be part of the course. So with this, I would just indicate that the course was a stage, stage of, a, 
of a consequence of different um, additions, and no doubt it will still be explored further. And we have also on our homepage, we have put a page there so that we can continually bring up to date some of the data. And that is what I will at the end, I will, I will show you at the end how this works. <clears throat> so, so this is very current. So these are for us new participants. So the documents of Kobovitz, that's also found in um, the course, the complete program of the, of the course, which took place in Preslau and in Kobovitz. And the Breslau conference was only, only a side um, initiative for alongside the agricultural course in Kobovitz, but it was nonetheless very large and actually included many of the Karma lectures. And here is a um, from Maurice Bach and Karl Kaiserlink, who through this drawing was uh, as like a thank you card to Rudolf Steiner. And here also a little notes from Steiner where, where the, oh, we're only concerned with the, the upper one. The answer to the question from the question of her graph Kaiser length, I will as soon as possible formulate, for I must come much further and much improve with my force, my powers. So please excuse me from the, with Count Kaiser length. And this was a notice to Gunter Wachsmult in reaction to the, for, to the questions which came from the farmers after COVID, these questions to Vaxmut, to a better understanding of the course. And these questions are also in the archive magazine. And these questions are, of course, very interesting. We also see how already then the artificial manures had really taken hold in many places. So perhaps just to give you a little bit of appetite for these questions and this documentation. <clears throat> and so it was also not possible for Steiner to really go into these questions in the same way due to his health. Now regarding the actual publications. We have introduced, since we have been working with this, the, the whole, to completing the whole Gesamthausgabe, we have been working with a kind of um, four-cornered um, brackets. And this can appear in the, in the text. And then we can see this then is presented there with great transparency because it shows that that is where the public, the editor has introduced us and the changes which he, which he has done, that is also explained in the indications at the end. If so if we're looking, would like to find So this is this is what we've changed. Um, this point about Eigensinnig, so that the change brought about by the editors in the in the second um, in the second edition has become unique. So we've decided to bring this into the main text, and the previous. Um, um, indications we then find in the indications at the back. So therefore, the whole text then becomes even more exciting. And in one place, we have also made a very good um, entry, but I think it is very significant because we've added the word cosmic quantitative. We have changed this because in a note, from Lily Kalisko, we have found the word cosmic quantitative instead of cosmic qualitative. 
And then we found that Stein in various different places had been given quantitative aspects because it is because for with animals, then of course we have to talk about uh, the maximum amount of um, animals on the farm, so sufficient manure available. And in this way, we have also oh, we have also found it uh, explained very clearly why this is important to do this in order to simply to see how we have progressed and worked with this. <clears throat> Then, of course, I was also wanted to show it in 1924 appeared very no, very new in 1924. And the more I worked with work with the Gesamtausgaben and I've been working with previous lectures, I think that there were also very many things which were already prepared in earlier earlier on but only as a kind of um, seed form and not not developed and interesting in completely different um, different surroundings so uh, in Whitson in 1907 in a Munich congress where he where he brought a lot of things into the, into the theosophical society and the comparison this with the with um of it. And you see up above the top on the right, the hall in Munich, where the Theosophical Society was meeting. <clears throat> so this was nothing to do with agriculture. This is a totally Theosophical Congress. And there Rudolf Steiner spoke. He spoke about this way. You see, let us see a little, a little, by, a little example. But it is like this. That, that, that the chaos appears where breakdown products or destroyed products appear, which are highly useful. And without this procedure would not be able to exist. You, they take animal excretions, which are used, are taken out as manure onto the field in order for the farmer to bring fruitfulness on the land and then to bring fruitfulness to the soil. So then what was it, this? This um, manure was all beautifully formed plants that it has taken its path and served as food for the animals, according to the laws by which the animals are are fed, that such end products lead back are the are the they come from the chaos which comes out but which is which then that is where the starting point which serves as food material for the animals and now by way of comparison in the agriculture course two places one place from the, from the old, old one every time the earth the earthly becomes super earthly from the seed formation to the end, it forms itself to a chaos. Every time the for something forms out of the seed chaos, out of the whole world cosmos, of which the new organism, the old organism has the tendency, um, the seeds in the current world situation through its affinity in the particular world situation that in the right direction so that out of the out of the seed of a dandelion another sandal dandelion of peers so the whole history out of which the substances with which i am working with fertilization um, enables the structure to be open enough so that out of the chaos or out of the spiritual world can have its influence. And this gesture, which um, Steiner refers to in, a, in another way in the agriculture course, the hydrogen carries everything which is somehow formed or alive astrality back then into again into the wide cosmos so that it becomes that out of the so it is taken up once again in the in the world space so really the hydrogen releases dissolves everything once more 
So this is in the fertilizing um, teaching of Steinem in the Kobovitz, of course, that is then the in the cosmos that this is um, in terms of elements, this is this teal is the hydrogen. And finally, I would like to bring two quotes further. <clears throat> Um, Karl Lang, that also you can also include in the participant list. He's then he would he had a person Erich had, had learned with Karl Lang, and so he had worked. He had written a book, Leben, uh, Lebensbegegnung, and he was a what he was a guard for Steiner. And, and Steiner, and had accompanied Steiner on his walks through the cow sheds. And, and according to Karl Lahn, he said, everything in the agricultural course, which has been spoken, is in, is in a cosmic connection. Only if we take this path into the most distant places can the healing element be brought back to the earth and refresh its forces. And now back to the archive magazine, the passage through the spiritual world is fertilization for the earth existence. In this sense, Rudolf Steiner can, in the new um, approach to the renewal of agriculture, spoke about the that unroasted horn meal would be better and because of its higher content of hydrogen. This high hydrogen content is actually much more important than the, than the new nitrogen contents for true um, manuring value. And perhaps we can remember the title of Jean-Michel Florin at the Gertianum for a year or two ago. Well, he's very clearly made that this passage through the seed stage, through the, through the seed chaos is necessary in order that the plants can, can become regenerative so that they can gather their forces from the cosmos and thereby be, be um, productive. And that I think is the precious, which, is, which belongs to the, main gesture of the agriculture course already spoke about in 1907 for, to the theosophists. And now finally, I would like to, right at the beginning, I said that there was this autobiography of Alexander Graf von Kaiserlink, who was, um, which was published. And there, there is also a few very interesting descriptions of Kobovitz. And it is appeared in that publication. There were, which is only, only receivable from him. And perhaps it would be interesting to check it out once more. That in the archive magazine, we have also um, a description from Karl von Kaisen. Kaiserlink, which is then um, explained. So the name that he, he drew to, to Dornach in order to Dornach, but he had a heart attack in the train on the way there. And Herr Waldner explained to us that, that many people knew it, many didn't, that Karl von Kaiserlink, um, in the knowledge of Hannah Kaiserlink, had encouraged a relationship with his secretary and a child is Karl Heinz Scheel, who was for 10 years, the representative of the anthroposophical research community, the general secretary of the German um, research society. And there he was the illegitimate son of Karl von Kaiserlink. But, but all publicly known, but also one has in relation to the death decide to not mention this because it was not, did not die on the train, but died at a Christmas party with his secretary. <clears throat> 
and that is um, given in, in different um, presentations. And we've included this um, um, in the agriculture course because it appeared after the archive uh, magazine. If we do see contradictions, then it is partly to do with the knowledge of the um, of the of the um, process. So then, of course, there's a long introduction into the question and answers. Um, but in the agricultural course, there is the uh, the Einstein's theory of relativity comes in. Also quite exciting to see what what has this got to do with the agricultural course. I would like to thank Walter Staffung and Malcolm Gardner, I've said already. Then also a little bit, we go as a as a as a publicator, we're a little bit on thin ice because we are of course dilettantes in, in this. We can only we can only um, bring as much as we can. So please be generous with us as um, as um, publishers that we are kind of working on this, so that in this case we that we. Uh, it's, it's wonderful that being able to work so well with the agriculture section. A new edition is never something final, but a, but a further step in the, in the research story. And because we know this various knowledge is broad, that this is that you can also find the various mistakes. And so after a couple of days, um, we find a few mistakes. So on our on our um, archive page, we also have a place for corrections, and there you already find. This is the most current picture. You can also find one or two different, several different um, corrections to it. So that is what happens. So I wanted to just conclude, conclude so that I pass it, pass it back. <clears throat> So we, it's, uh, we have to limit ourselves on this. I have, of course, spoken much longer than I had intended. So the, my question is, can we continue in this way? Is it OK to continue a little bit further? And, and when I see the nods, then I think we will continue. Now, now we have Albrecht Runer, and it's this concerns a, a conversation between us in 2014, where this work then gradually came into action. So Albrecht Runer was um, a partner with me in developing, trying to finance this whole project. Yes, dear friends, I would like to begin something quite different. The first thing is, of course, a thanks to the work which has been done in the Nachlassverwaltung. I can only say that, um, that the attempt is made to work on that which Roger Steiner had mostly only orally reported to make this accessible to a much wider public right through to an electronic edition. And I think that I think that Unchristian Cent has made this quite clear. Myself, I have have read the um, agricultural course in at the end of my military service and this is already the fifth edition and so I can also very I'm very happy to have a new edition now but I would like to look at it in such a way that that I that I would like to refer to a very honored um, biodynamic farmer who very early on said, because I was already active at Leonhof, that you people in the, in the village community, you're not doing any agriculture. 
You've got social question and the farming is not a social question. And that is a memorial, if you like, something which I've always lived with. And I would like to, however, to consider the agriculture course from that side. And then when you see how the how biodynamics has spread, that we have always got these social themes are present. Thank you. And when we go into it, then it is, um, then we can see, so um, in, in brackets, he, Rudolf Steiner says right in the, at the very beginning. So this is a question which, this is a quote which comes from, um, that he said that all aspects of, um, of life belong within agriculture. Now we can say, of course, then he has to say that in the introduction, but then right at the ends before the final words were given, the last words he then spoke about salt and about the tomatoes and so on for some time and then about the potatoes and and then this sentence came these are all things through which the knowledge of agriculture belongs within the inner aspects of under, which we understanding um, and that is very important, that agriculture is always interconnected with the whole social context. So I have brought this like a kind of encasing the whole course. So if we then look into the course from this aspect, then it is like a statement in the second lecture saying we are walking around in the belly of agriculture. So when we have this this picture, and then, then we look in Rhineland to see how we are digging out coal from deep, deeply underground. We can see how we are working in agriculture. So not just the smaller grease farm, but perhaps the whole of the earth. There are a lot of things which are indigestible, things which are put onto this belly of the farm. And in many places, we can see this. And a further, a further point, which I would like to mention in the different way, is how he, in relation to the preparation, speaks about the dandelion. Where he then says, the innocent yellow dandelion, wherever he's growing in the area, is beneficial. And then he speaks about the ambassador of heaven, how, how nature, if we know, of course, through agriculture, also in the social, from a social uh, viewpoint. And when we, when we then extend this in this conference and in small questions, how do we make use of this chance? We always hear, we always end from the field to the plate, but also like Helmut Hartmut said, it goes much further and goes right through into the digestion of, of substances. And this is not so, has such a great emphasis, but I think in the future, this will become um, more significant. <clears throat> so my contribution, my view upon this, over the decades in which I've been working with the agricultural course is the accompanying of agriculture with a social question. And that when one is going through the agriculture, but through the landscape, that farms which are only working with agriculture, they nonetheless have these social questions. And then when we looked at the pictures of Yoka Bloxma or, or today also it was indicated as well, then we see that the actually there is um, a spiritual impulse, um, impulse way of working with nature always contains, always holds the social question within it. And I think this is something which becomes very clear in this whole course. <clears throat> Thank you, Albrecht. <clears throat> So he is very living on in Camp Hill, Leonhof, and he's, he's then really embedded in this social element. And then we then when we look into the, the, the history of the 
of the development of the course that we can see how Carl Koenig, the founder of Camp Hill, how really took up this biodynamic agriculture. <clears throat> so, dear friends, dear participants of the conference, and dear few future people who would like to be infected by this course. <clears throat> it, I must, however, bring some more thoughts that the work on the agriculture course is, um, many people have already been mentioned, but now it is already a hundred years old. And the traces are found at particular places to see how much power, how much force has been invested into this work from people who, who have um, decided to take this work up out on the field or in the farm or in the greenhouse or on the, in the compost in the forest, in trading, um, have, been, have been working strongly. And the energy which we still find today in this whole field. So I'm really convinced that in the next years we will discover lots of new things which, which will give our work a new direction, which will give a new depth and bring new viewpoints, new opportunities for research. Everything is already indicated in it so that we can actually sense this as energy. And this passage I would like to refer to, and also in this place for me personally, offer my thoughts to, my thanks to Ernst Becker, who was the first one who, who brought, who did a written, or did an earlier edition of the course. And also, I think, Oli, you were also a pupil of him. Just to simply say that at the beginning in terms of thank you. So what is it this about? What is actually this course? And for me at the moment, it is always, it is this a viewpoint that the rape culture, that the destructive uh, approach needs to be contrasted so we have to bring healing and so in this we're right in the middle of the question of quality that this kind of agriculture is that life forces are needed for life and that the question of these questions of these forces are far more difficult much more individualized process as that of substances the substances are the at the end point of processes out of which the forces are active and for and i think one of the most difficult most strictest things things which come makes it new possible to raise interest for this kind of agriculture and um, now when we take such a uh, over over title that perhaps when you kind of let go of the um course for a little bit and form one's own concepts but also it also concerns the way the words are given and this is one side which i would like to share with you this again and again looking at the way the words have been, the words have sounded. That is something I would like to invite you, even if you have only read the plays five times already, and perhaps already five years ago, that you've really understood this already. It is not about an intellectual understanding, but it is actually about that we can link onto an image of onto to live onto a picture of this stream, which I think which we are particularly strongly able to sense. Like as as our as the publishers, this stream which Rudolf Steiner spoke about, we're standing in front of the unusual phenomenon, and I'll come back to the book itself in a moment, that Rudolf Steiner had prepared himself extremely well and that we have been able to 
publish a lot more notes than had previously been found. And this in itself is value of, the, of a study to work with these notes to see what he had really said. And there we sense very clearly that he was in the position in this particular place, and it was very good that we could see these photos of the place, these people, very concrete situation there in, in, the, in this black earth area in Poland, that we have this in our mind, that this made it possible to bring down or to milk from heaven, if you like, those things which he had prepared into practice, because what he brought is not presented in this form in the notes. So I, I have very strongly through this work, I have the impression that it is really about a concrete, a real spiritual activity out of which he had spoken. And I think I come to the other aspect, because on the one side we have this work on the way the words have been presented, which is then we continually need, and on the other side, the great, great threats, the substance which, which are kind of brought in. <clears throat> and there we can make some beautiful discoveries for the, about the way Rudolf Steiner worked. He was somebody who didn't always uh, bring the sources in the way we do in science today. We all know very well this example, this term in the agriculture course of the plant, which is an inverted human being, something which is very fundamental to us, but which is also what lives between soil and plant in relation to the human being, and what, what is the agricultural individuality. And also to the question of how do we understand the animal? All these things is not only Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Steiner, he linked on to some ancient knowledge which was there in, in the Greeks and in the Shul Skarcha and even by Darwin. The idea that the plant is an inverted human being is something which one has been flowing in the in, in the esoteric history of humanity. And Rudolf Steiner relate, brings this in, and this is something new. He brings it into the constitution of how the agricultural individuality can then begin to develop. So this is just one point from this huge context. I wanted to bring a second, second one because here in the context of a quality conference, we can actually present this in this new edition. There is a much more difficult um, area which we have to work on much more today. The big question, what actually is the right kind of feed and how does quality arise in relation to animals through feeding? And there, I think, the eighth lecture, which has previously been quoted. And at the beginning of this lecture, he said he gives a very unusual word. Now, that is something. It's not. That is the content of every, every kind of agricultural teaching. So what is it that is all generally and fundamental to be occupied and then go into the various measures. He then brings these four aspects which are significant for feeding. He speaks about the very different um, nourishment which is needed for our nerve sense organization of the animal, the head sight, side, he senses that he is not very well understood, and on the other hand, into the metabolic side of the organism. And every one of each of these sides, he provides two different, two different poles, two different streams of nourishment. 
And of these four, I would like to draw on one because it is perhaps easy to understand. And perhaps it most strongly shows how radically biodynamic quality can be developed. He explains there, if you want to keep the animal in the right way so that it can really, really live long, when it is really a good breed, then you would have to give these animals, you have to enable them to become in a perceptive way come into relationship within the, with their surroundings. He could say, just take them out onto the pasture, but to have a real sense perceptible connection with their surroundings. And just very briefly, we can see that biodynamic is actually a, a structure of understanding of the animals in agriculture where the relationship to the real cosmically surrounded world is something which has nutritional quality. It's not just wonderful that animals are allowed to go outside and make use of their muscles. No, it is not. It is about nutrition in relation to that part of the organized organism in which, which through the domestication and so on, still have very little. But we also have to really make sure that we don't weaken them even further over the generations. I could also extend this much further in relation to the, to the keeping of livestock. That we would actually very see that this is a very radical extension of the concept of feeding, which also... <clears throat> something which we can we can also understand on the approach of anthroposophy so we look at the relationship of culture and nature so perhaps one example of such a big picture which was an example for the very precise connection to the words in there christian center had previously referred to the one word in the second lecture the cosmic qualitative analysis is very, very clearly to be changed to cosmic quantitative. One single word where we notice that the cosmic aspect is the quality aspect. The quantitative aspect is precisely as important to recognize in this conference that the number of animals, the different varieties, right through to the specific place. That is what's important. So in this point, I would really like to enter into this, into the one side, to really look it at this particular sentence, the strength of that thought, and on the other side, to become ever more independent in relation to the broad, broader connections that are needed for the development of agriculture in the future. <clears throat> so I think the we've now had an experience of the agriculture course, and I think that is a good participation so that we can actually engage with the new edition. And the book is now printed, a thousand examples. Some, the magazine is also available, and it is available here. Um, a whole set of them which can be bought here. And I think I can also, for those who are here by Zoom, I can say that also it can be sent from the Verlag of the Goetheanum. If you can then just set, put your order with um, for those people who are taking part here, there is a special price who would like to have this new, these two new books. We are, we of course have to support the bookshop of the Goetheanum that it is for you a little bit 
difficult economically. So it would be good that be, I would also, I think it's also a good foundation for new translation. So I know that the Spanish um, translation is currently being done, that it have waited a little bit for the new edition to come out. And also I would like to stimulate that it also other new um, translations are in process, that they come into contact so that you can get a PDF and you can work more cleanly so that we are not only in German, but also in the other languages, we can actually pass on this this very important foundation for our work. <clears throat> that is also um, a, a, like a preparation for the 100 years uh, jubilee, but that is something we're looking forward to this. And in this sense, I would like to conclude and invite you to actually, over the next years, to to bring yourself up to date, if you like, that we are now in the situation that in 2024, we will be having the 100 year anniversary. And that is something which we have in our own beautiful situations, but also as us working ahead of us to prepare for this. On the one side we can celebrate, but also that we can develop, gain new strengths and new enthusiasm in order to take this impulse further into the second century of its effectiveness. So thank you very much for joining in.